Hey everyone, this is Jason. I'm going to walk you through the Dmedia snapshotting feature. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is tell the Dmedia service log file. So that's .cache slash Dmedia slash Dmedia dash service dot, dot log. Um, and then open another terminal. So Dmedia CLI is basically a command line interface to the Dmedia Dbus API. And they also try to make it fairly good at documenting the API. So if you run Dmedia CLI with no argument, it, it lists the available methods. Um, and what I'm going to show you is snapshot. Um, it takes a database name. So say we want to snapshot the main Dmedia database. Um, and what that does is it dumps the CacheDB database out as a standard JSON file. So in um, .local share dmedia, that's where all the dmedia files go, um, you'll see there is this dump directory. And in there are all these JSON, JSON files. <coughs> um, so it dumps it out to a file, and then it uses um, bizarre to make a, a, to commit a snapshot of it, of it at that point. Um, and then the other interesting command is if you do snapshot all, it uh, create a recent snapshot of every single database, um, with the exception of it doesn't snapshot the special CacheDB databases, so uh, the underscore replicate, uh, replication, I believe, and underscore users, and it also doesn't snapshot the thumbnail database because it's just not that interesting. Um, anyway, so. In this dot uh, local share media, um, we'll see that oops, puts this under version control. Um, now, this snapshotting isn't intended for kind of user visible version control. Um, this is just a, a kind of cover my ass a data safety thing for now. Um, and the reason is when when we're validating Dmedia, um, you know, especially the, the behaviors between multiple devices and that Dmedia is correctly, um, you know, re responding to low durability events, um, you know, where the user's files don't have enough copies, so it has to create more copies, um, stuff like that. Having this, um, th these running snapshots over time will help us validate Dmedia's behavior, and it's also a good um, audit trail in case something goes wrong. So, you know, as we're, we're testing Dmedia and, um, you know, if someone has a, a data loss issue, we want this audit trail to be able to look at it and figure out, you know, why did that happen? How do we prevent that from happening? Um, yeah, so th this isn't a feature that's going to stay around forever. Um, but right now it's, you know, it wasn't that hard to add and I think it provides a lot of value as, for, as far as um, validating Dmedia. Um, and then another handy thing is that because these are dumped to standard JSON files with emphasis on being pretty readable, um, it's an easy way to explore the schema and kind of get a handle on how you know our, our edit description works, how the Dmedia schema works. So this file here contains a Novica edit. Um, you'll see that in these databases, there, there's this dmedia-0, and the, the zero is we version the databases, the database names. Um, so if we need to make a schema change, that will have a different database name. Um, so that's the main dmedia database. These are dmedia projects, um, and these are Novica edits, um, and this is the main Novica database, similar to the, the dmedia database. Um, so, in this case, um, this is the edit we're looking at. So it's just got these, uh, I guess, five slices. Um, so it just makes it, you know, kind of easy to explore the schema. Uh, a, a cool feature, if anyone is interested in tackling it, um, it you know, wouldn't be. It's not too difficult, and would definitely be a great way to get familiar with with Novacut and our code base. Um, I'd love there to be an interactive way of browsing the edit description. So 
um, let's see, this graph structure where, um, uh, let's see, yeah, so this is the sequence. Um, these are the five slices in that sequence. It would be great if you could um, uh, see this, you know, it displays the documents and then make these references clickable where it would then display that, that document. Um, so just make it really easy to explore the schema and understand, um, you know, when, when you make a change like this, what actually is happening in the schema, what, what, what changes. Um, so that would be a cool project. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, I guess one other quick thing I'll show you. Um, so as of 12.10, we now have a very easy way to securely peer the devices with um, SSL. So DMD CLI peers shows you the currently um, connected uh, DMD peers. So th these are peers that, um, th these are your, your own devices. So this is for, um, you know, you have a laptop and a workstation or whatever, and it's syncing everything between, between the two. So now on my little netbook, I'm going to start the media. And in a second, in the log file, we'll see um, it detect that netbook over Abahi. So there's the, the info there. Um, and now if I do DMD CLI peers, I now see that there's this peer. Um, this here. So we ID the machines based on a hash of the RSA public key, and that's what that is right there. Um, and, and everything requires SSL. It's like if you tried to open this, um, you're not going to connect to the standard browser because you know you have to have the appropriate um, uh, client certificates to connect. Um, but yeah, so that's about all. So DVD CLI snapshot and snapshot all, great way to explore things. And like I said, this isn't um, intended as like a user-facing version control. This is just to help developers for now. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Oh, and if you have any questions about any of this, the best place to get started is to stop by the um, Hash Nova Cut channel on Freenode and ping myself, JD Rose, or you know anyone else there, and we'll help you out. All right, thanks for watching.